The Spectrum Analyzer application, when combined with the NetAlly NXT1000 portable Spectrum Analyzer adapter, provides a comprehensive view of RF interference and its impact on the wireless network's overall performance. Let's look at how we can use this application to identify and locate interference sources in the 2.4 and 5 GHz bands. Before running the Spectrum application, you must connect the NetAlly NXT1000 Portable Spectrum Analyzer to the Type-A USB port. Portable Spectrum Analyzer will monitor the RF signals in the 2.4 and 5 GHz bands, and the Spectrum application will provide a graphical representation of those signals and their duty cycles. When we first open the Spectrum application, we see the Frequency Spectrum view. This view uses colors to display a heat map of the band you've selected. This heat map provides a graphical view of the density of the recent RF measurements. Blues and greens indicate there is less RF detected for the given frequency and amplitude. Yellow, orange, and red indicate there is a repeated presence of RF at the frequency and amplitude. For example, as we monitor the 2.4 GHz band, we see narrow spikes pop up and then disappear. These are typically caused by frequency hopping devices such as Bluetooth. While they're using the same frequency ranges as Wi-Fi devices, these Bluetooth devices transmit for a very short period and move across the channels. This reduces the interference to Wi-Fi devices. Centered on channel 11, we see a concentration of RF energy. This is what a Wi-Fi access point looks like in the frequency spectrum view. The transmission is centered on channel 11, but spreads to both sides. The cooler colors indicate this device is transmitting for short periods of time. We can drill in by double tapping channel 11. This allows us to get a closer view for the small frequency range. Tapping on the graph will display a thin vertical line. Above the graph, we can see the frequency associated with the location of the line and the max signal for that frequency. To zoom back to the full view, I'll tap on the restore icon in the upper right corner. The view may be paused by tapping the pause icon. To clear the current values and refresh the display, tap on the refresh icon. Switching bands is accomplished by tapping the settings icon in the upper right corner, then tap Wi-Fi band. I'll select 5 GHz, then tap the back arrow to return to the frequency spectrum view. Let's switch the view to the waterfall view. I'll switch back to the 2.4 GHz band so we can see a little more activity on the graph. The waterfall view displays RF measurements over time. The colors represent the amplitude of a frequency at the time displayed to the left of the view. The waterfall view offers two display modes. These are current and average five sweeps. In current mode, the waterfall view displays a real-time view of the measured RF signals. If I tap on settings and select waterfall view type, I can switch to average five sweeps. The waterfall view now averages every five sweeps and displays the average. This provides a means to focus on some of the high duty cycle signals that could create interference or contention. Here is an example of a file transfer over the Wi-Fi network. This display is useful when looking for interference sources that may be transmitting over long periods of time. Here's an example of the waterfall view when the spectrum analyzer is near a microwave oven that's operating. We can see there are strong non-802.11 signals being detected across the 2.4 GHz band. This may impair the performance of devices that are near this interferer. Another example is a video camera operating in the 2.4 GHz band. In this case, channels 1, 2, and 3 are most impacted. If I switch back over to the frequency spectrum view, we can see a red spike indicating a high duty cycle. As I move closer to the device, we see the amplitude increase. This is a useful process for locating interference sources. The third view is real-time view. This view uses three colors to indicate what is happening in real time within the spectrum. The yellow line is the current measurement. The blue line is the average, 
and the green line is the max hold. We may use the blue average line to identify frequencies where we're seeing significant RF transmissions. If the test tool has been claimed to link live, these views may be uploaded. The saved views may be then included in reports, trouble tickets, or used to document the current state of the RF environment at a specific location.